All right, how did I get into KDE? Um, when I was a university student, I studied computer science, um, and at some point I was fed up with my Windows installation and I was looking for alternatives. So everyone was talking about this newfangled Ubuntu thing, which supposedly was amazing. Um, so I installed that, tried it for an hour, and was, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, but we're looking around more, and then there was this Kubuntu thing, which I installed and stuck with, because I used Conversation, uh, the IRC client, copied the instant messaging client, K address book, uh, <laughs> yes, oh God. yes, for real. Um, Back then it still worked. K mail, and the file browser. Conqueror back then, and all of them could make use of the address data in the K address book. <laughs> and it was, I was amazed. <laughs> that did work indeed. So then, then I was hooked because I really liked um, the seamless integration between all these applications. Um, Try the <laughs> <laughs> And then at some point, a friend of mine who was contributing to KDE's music player, Amarok, said that um, since I'm using um, KDE software now, I, I should do something for KDE. <laughs> and that they were going to uh, go to Linux Talk in two weeks and that I should come and uh, help run the Amarok booth. And I did that and I had no clue what I was doing. But... <laughs> The nice thing was that people asked like the same seven, eight questions over and over again. I had that figured out pretty quickly. And across the hallway, there was the KDE booth with people like Aid and Sebas and Danimo. Um, and they were very nice. And since then, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, being the, K the KDE EV president currently, uh, <laughs> Where do you expect the next academy to be? <laughs> <laughs> and how to get there? There, there, how do you, how do you there are there? only very few right answers. <laughs> I think there are many very right answers to this question, but some of them are more right than others. <laughs> <laughs> um, personally, I wouldn't mind a nice sandy beach with palm trees, but I don't think we have that many of them in Europe. So. <laughs> Well, Gotta work on that. <laughs> I started on, on KDE that was in 98, so that was like 18 years ago or something. And I just needed a message box for my talk demon. So a friend of mine had actually shown me KDE 1, and, uh, and I thought that was quite good, so I decided to use that just to be able to show a message box for my talk demon. That's another share. And then I started to do some some more work in, on KDE, and then suddenly Torben had to go and write an office suite, so I took over the file manager. And that was a long, long time ago. Um, so I've been an open source user for more years than I'd care to admit, because um, it shows my age. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, um, for years, actually tried to become a contributor to several projects, and um, KDE was the first one that actually responded back. Yes, do this. It was Laurent Montel with documentation, and I did tons and tons of documentation for Kmail, and then um, I moved on to Kubuntu, and then Jonathan taught me how to package, and that was the end of that. <laughs> no more documentation. <laughs> um, and then I signed up for, uh, I talked to Ben Cooksley about doing an SOK project, and that's how I got the CI system, which has, yeah, been exciting, really exciting. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't see myself going anywhere, so. Um. So, so I was bored, 
Um, <laughs> so, so I ordered, what was it, Red, Red Hat 6 or whatever <laughs> on Amazon, and I installed it, and it was terrible. And then, <laughs> well, it was. And, and then I installed KDE, which was called a software back then, it was weird. And then you got enlightened. And then I got enlightened. No, I really hated it. I really hated it. And then I installed SUSE. And it was better. And then I discovered Amarok. And for some reason that I don't recall, I, I went to a conference with the Amarok people and started the weird tradition of howling in the hallways because Amarok's low is a wolf. So obviously he would be howling. And just the fact that one would be willing to do that in public made me stay. <laughs> and that made me stay with KE. That's why I'm here. All right. So, uh, <laughs> what do you have against people not wearing suits? Well, I've. Yeah. I don't have anything against them, but. Um, there are. I think so. so I think that dressing nicely is a way to show respect to the people you meet. So, um, so what should we think of you now that you're not dressed nicely and not wearing a bow tie? I feel offended. <laughs> yeah, you I should. Feel, I feel as, offended as you rightfully now. should. Um, yeah, but no, I think I think. It's a nice t-shirt, though. It is, yeah, it is a nice yeah, t-shirt. But I think generally dressing dressing up is a way to show appreciation and to to. Just elevate the entire affair a bit, right? With everyone wearing t-shirts and jeans, someone has to hold up the flag of fashion, <laughs> as it were. What if you look like shit with pants? And you just want to, you know, wear shorts. N nobody wants to wear shorts. N <laughs> <laughs> no. You're obviously... Look at the behind the camera, you. <laughs> You're obviously haven't got to Southern California, have you? <laughs> oh. Or what? Arizona. Oh. Or Arizona, yeah. But we have. Like in KDE, you get to travel a lot, right? And so we just decided to go to LA, because why not? And, and you... I wore trousers in LA, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, good. I good. Mean, we have it on tape. What, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, Kevin went down to my university uh, to propose a project on... Tomahawk, which was uh, a multimedia player, a music player, basically. And it was done with Qt++, it's not really KDE, but it put me the, um, the, the first finger into the, the machinery, right? And uh, after that, I was searching for an internship in Spain, because I had my girlfriend there. I didn't find an internship where she was, but I found an internship in uh, Barcelona, where there was a blue system company. Uh, it was, they were doing mostly KDE, so... Basically, I did a three months internship there and I kept going after that on the KDE side, but not with my girlfriend, but that's all. That's where, how I got hooked up. And after that, I, I kept going on the Zenshin project, on K-People project a bit. And uh, let's see what this goes. All right. I got started in KDE in 2008 when I was a student, psychology student, and um, a classmate of mine made me aware of a program called Season of Usability, which was a bit like Google Summer of Code, but for usability things. It was done by Open Usability. And um, so I applied. By the time I was still using Ubuntu with Unity, or no, back then still just GNOME. And um, one of the projects was creating patterns and human interface guidelines for Plasma 4, or back then probably still called KDE 4. Uh, and this was actually the first time I learned about it. And um, yeah, so then I started using it and at the same time contributing. And that got me hooked. And since then, I've been part of the community. Yeah. Well, so I first tried KDE in Red Hat 6.0. So it was a few years ago, and since then I always loved KD. Uh, I first got in contact with the community a few years later, like when in, 20, in 2007, I was in a free software association in, in Coruña called Hepur, and there was an active um, 
and active uh, genome uh, um, contributors there who said, oh, let's do a genome event. And I say, oh, if it's a genome event, it should also be a kiddie event. And so that means, okay, very well, we are going to do a joint genome and kiddie event, and you have to contact the kiddie people. And then, and then was when I got in contact with the community. And um, well, since then, until today. Yeah. Right, so I got introduced to KDE after using Kubuntu, and after about a week of using Kubuntu, I was upgrading my KDE on like a 256k APS line, and something broke, and I talked to one of the KDE contributors over here, and they went talk to Harold, oh, who's sitting right next to me, <laughs> uh, and he tell you how to fix it. So I hopped into Kubuntu Devel, and Harold goes, yeah, this is how you fix it. And next thing I know, I talk, I'm talking to Jonathan, and I'm getting appropriated for packaging fixes everywhere. <laughs> and about a year later, I am in Disneyland with Harold and Pluto, for some reason, and meeting other meeting other one to contributors. Oh, wait, wait. this is not how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how it happened. <laughs> one day in Hashkubanti, this, this trolley guy came in and he kept saying, Oh, this is rubbish, this is so terrible, oh, why do you guys ever do this? I'm going back to Windows. You should all run Mac stuff, and everybody, everybody should join the GNOME Foundation. And we say, no, 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 look, look, why don't you join us in, in Kubuntu Devel, and why don't you be productive, and look, look, you can make this fix here. And, and, and so we took his patch, and it didn't work, but, but <laughs> we told him it did, so that gave him the, the uh, impetus to carry on. And since then, he, it still doesn't work, but he still carried on. This is the first time I heard, hear, hear this version of the story. <laughs> Li liar. But <laughs> John, this is the second time that Jonathan was involved in some contrib con contributors. Yeah, that... That that is suspicious. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> uh, well, I think I actually used KE first when I tried Linux because I was interested in how Linux works when I wanted to switch from Windows, and I didn't like it at KDE three times. It was complicated and weird, so I started with GNOME in some well in some SUSE version and. Then when KDE 4.0 was released, um, I well, uh, I wanted to try it out because it was something shiny new and I had enough time. So uh, I looked at this one and it was quite like innovative and I liked how the design was done. And so I was kind of stuck with KDE 4.0 and then switched to KDE 4.1 and 4.2 and it was, it was actually shitty to use. But it was interesting, and uh, meanwhile I had discovered Kate, and Kate was what actually made me stick with KDE as a default desktop environment, but I constantly switched back to, uh, to GNOME or other desktops to, well, check how they, all go, they were going. But yeah, my primary desktop is KDE, so... KDE! Hmm? No, I went to university, and they taught me how to okay. make a Java program that could put a button here, and I thought, that's nice. But how do you make a real computer program that does really interesting things? And the only way to find that out is to look at the open source code that's available out there, and KDE is the best source of that. <laughs> so how I got started? Um, well, I actually I started using it because I first looked at the code, um, because I thought that for free software that would be pointless if the I was using something I wasn't feeling like contributing to. Uh, so I evaluated several options and settled on KDE because I knew C++ at the time and that was what, what I was most uh, acquainted for. Um, and yeah, it didn't take long until I found something I didn't like in there, uh, which happened to be the fact that I hate icons on the desktop. Um, and you could have anything in Kicker at the time, so that was the panel that we had, except for the, <laughs> except for, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, thank you. <laughs> except for the CDs uh, that we inserted and we had detection, so I just started with a uh, plugin for that, for Kicker, and then got yeah, sucked toward the uh, libraries and frameworks and so on.